Have you ever wondered why the miles per gallon on your dash hardly ever lines up with what is listed on your car's window sticker? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you why that may be, as well as give you three additional tips on what could help you achieve better miles per gallon on your car. If you're new here, my name is Alex. I like to share weekly videos, tips and tricks all around your Subaru. If you wanna follow along, consider clicking that subscribe button down below. To better understand how this number is calculated, we first need to understand how the cars are even being tested. And this is not just Subaru, this is every car maker across the board. So these tests are done in a controlled environment where your car is driven in a stationary position on a dyno. Now, if you're not familiar with what a dyno is, just imagine your car on a giant treadmill driving in one position. And during this time, the car is put through tests that that simulate highway driving as well as city driving with stop and go traffic. During the city test, cars are driven an average of 21 miles per hour. And for the highway test, they're driven an average of 48 miles per hour with a top speed of 60 miles per hour. And I don't know about you, but in our area, if you're driving no more than 60 miles per hour on the highway, you're probably gonna get ran over. So what can we conclude from this? Well, since we know that the window sticker rating is based on testing done in a controlled environment, and chances are you're not driving your car in a controlled environment, you're driving it out in the real world, you might not be able to achieve that number very easily. However, there are some ways that you can help improve your fuel efficiency, things that you actually can control. By the way, if you're curious about why auto brands even bother posting this on the window sticker, this helps give you a baseline when you're, when you're comparing cars in the competition. So maybe you're looking at Subaru, but you're also looking at Mazda, Honda, Toyota. You might like to know a baseline of where each individual car, assuming they've had the same testing done, lands on their miles per gallon. And this is an easy way to do that. So then what can you do to help improve your fuel economy? Well, tip number one is to check all four of your tire pressures on your car. And the reason why I say that is because if you have low tire pressure on your wheels, that's gonna create more rolling friction. And more rolling friction is going to make your vehicle work harder to propel it forward, which is therefore going to burn more fuel. So that's one of the first tips that I usually share with somebody if they're trying to get better fuel efficiency out of their car is to check your individual tire pressure. And to check the tire pressure on your car, all you have to do is look at it on the dash on the driver's side. I'm gonna show you how to find your individual tire pressures there. But first, before we check that, how do you know where the tire pressure should be? That's usually on the inside of the door jam on the driver's side. You will see on this specific vehicle, it's a 2022 Subaru Outback, the front wheels should be at 35 PSI and the rear wheels should be at 33 PSI. And to check this, what we do is go here on the display. We're going to use these keys here to cycle up or down. It doesn't matter which arrow you use, but we're going to cycle through until we see the individual tire pressure readouts here on the display. And if you have a newer Subaru that doesn't have these switches back here, you just use the switch here to move that up and down. If you move that up and down, it does the exact same thing in the menu display. Now, you'll notice here on the display that the readout is showing zero and that's because these sensors are motion activated and sometimes you have to drive your car for a minute for those to populate so we're going to go ahead and do that and get those tire pressures reading out and as you can see, all four tires in this Outback have plenty of air in them. I'd probably adjust the rear just a little bit just to have it more in line with the spec at 33 PSI, but these tire pressures will fluctuate a little bit with temperature anyways, plus or minus. But the good news is if they are ever too low, it'll highlight it in orange. You'll see a light on your dash for your tire pressure sensor. You'll check it here and it'll highlight which wheel or tire is low. And once you've determined which tire is low, all you gotta do is air it up to the proper PSI. Tip number two, if you wanna improve your car's fuel efficiency, remove anything unnecessary from the top of the car or the inside of the car. And the reason I bring that up is because of wind resistance. So if you have bikes on top of the car, kayaks on top of the car, 
cargo boxes, baskets, whatever might be up there, that's creating more additional drag that's unnecessary. Now, if you're traveling and you need those items, then obviously you're going to have to do with it. But if you aren't needing that every single day, chances are you're not needing to daily drive around with your bike on the roof or your kayak on the roof. And in those cases, I would remove those when you're not using them. Or alternatively, like what I've done with bikes, instead of having the roof rack, I now have a hitch mounted rack because of the amount of drag that I was seeing with the bikes on top. Plus, if you ever go through like drive throughs or anything like that, you risk clipping your handlebars on the drive through sign or pulling into parking garages. So overall, I've just been a huge fan of the hitch mounted bike racks to begin with. Now with Subarus, you have typically a lot of cargo space where you can fit a lot of items in. Now, if you're traveling, you're gonna load that up with your gear and your passengers. But if you are daily driving, it's probably a good idea to take any of those unnecessary things out of the car because all that additional weight is making your car work harder to move it forward and again could decrease your fuel efficiency with the, all the additional unnecessary weight. Plus, I don't know about you all, but I just really enjoy having a nice clean car and decreasing the amount of clutter that is, is inside it to begin with. Tip number three, let's talk about vehicle maintenance. Keeping up with proper vehicle maintenance can help improve your fuel efficiency. And you may have noticed if you've had a car that you've had for any length of period of time, you may notice that your fuel efficiency may even get worse over time. And sometimes that's due to just some basic maintenance items that need to be addressed. Something as simple as an air filter, an engine air filter under the hood. If that's clogged significantly, that's restricting the airflow. Your engine is working harder to pull that air in and therefore you might burn some more fuel or even something like spark plugs. This is something that is a part of regular vehicle maintenance. If you have really old spark plugs, they might not be performing as efficiently as possible. You may even have a misfire depending on how old or how bad they are. And in those cases, you're going to cause your car to work harder and burn more fuel. So sometimes even something as simple as just replacing your spark plugs can help improve your miles per gallon. By the way, when I'm talking about replacing spark plugs, I'm not talking about those gimmicky ones that claim to improve your fuel efficiency by using their specific plug. All I'm talking about is taking your old plugs, maybe you've got 50, 60,000 miles on those original spark plugs, they're probably due for a refresh, just replacing them with the OEM spark plugs that originally came on your car, and that will probably help improve your miles per gallon. Now, if you've stuck around this long, I have one more bonus tip for you, and that is using something called auto start stop. Now, before you totally disregard this, let me show you something that I think is kind of cool. If you look on your display in the same area where you would see your gauge cluster, your uh, tire pressure, things like that, you can see something called your auto start stop calculator. This is calculating how long your car is shut down cumulative over the start stop cycles. So whenever you come to a complete stop and your engine shuts down, even if it's for just a few seconds or a few minutes, it all adds up here. And when we look at mine, you can see that over the last 4,785 miles, my car has been collectively shut off with that start stop system for 39 hours, 57 minutes and 11 seconds. And it's saved 19.3 gallons of gas. That's just over a full tank of gas. And while that's not life changing, that's not gonna make or break me. It is just cool to see that my car has calculated an approximate savings of fuel here and disregarding fuel savings altogether, when your car shut off for 39 hours, that is a lot of emissions that you have probably saved the environment. So just some other things to think about. I know a lot of people do care about fuel savings, but they also care about doing good for the environment. And that's just one other cool way to actually get an idea on your impact. So something cool to know about with the start stop system. Overall, I hope you found these tips valuable and helpful in some way that you can use them in your own daily life. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to click the like button before you go. If you have any questions, as always, leave those down in the comment section below. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you all in the next one.